Hello everybody, Joe Beretta here to tell you that this Friday, August 20th, is your final chance to pre-order the Movie Movie game and all of its fun expansions. Of Extraordinary Gentlemen! The Blair Witch Project X, yeah. The Exorcister Act. Yeah! Oh. The Good Sunshine. Yes! Oh. We're going to be shutting down pre-orders after Friday and going into production. So, if you want it, or if you got some friends that you think want it, or if you want 300 copies yourself, it's your final chance. Friday, the 20th of August, shutting down after that. So, go, go, go get it? Back to the podcast. I mean, now it's time for the podcast for the first time. I don't know what I'm doing. Shut the fuck up. Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know. Boobs, everybody. Welcome to a spooky Friday the 13th edition of the Valley Cast. Oh, I didn't realize it was Friday the 13th. It's Friday the 13th. Oh. Boom. Arr. You know, I'll tell you, Halloween is my favorite time of the year, guys. Oh. And I can't believe it's already Halloween 2022. Oh. Elliot, how do you feel about how was 2021 oh. was worse than 2020? 2021. I like all of them. I like all the years. I like all the years. <laughs> you know what? You're like the guy that's like, I, you know what? I like all the Weezer albums. I like all the Weezer albums. <laughs> I like all of it. Cause I like so, all the presidents. I like all the Weezer know, albums. Yeah. <laughs> Just, <laughs> dude, you're like the man. I was about. You to, know what? I, you Game know, of Thrones. <laughs> I love every season of Game of Thrones. Dude, I, you know what, man? I think I think it's time for a character. Like I've been thinking about like characters again. Like for some reason, like just kind of like, um, you know, there's just so much annoying shit out there. And when it comes to opinion, based, I don't agree. I like all of it. <laughs> yeah, but see, that's the that's the point. Like when there's when it comes to opinion based stuff, it's like, man, you either align or you don't. And the way you react to that is based on probably your your upbringing and your surroundings. But we're we're going way off track. What I'm trying to say Deep. is is <laughs> is that. It would be amazing if we just had a character or someone and like you don't even have to overtly say it's a character, but you could have the the like <laughs> you could call it like the fence post the fence post or like you could just call the site the fence post <laughs> or like the fence or something and you could and you could just have someone tweeting from the account all day that's just like I like everything. And then, like, when someone yeah, was like, yeah. Fence Post, what do you think about uh, Suicide Squad? I loved it. Loved it. Fence Post, what did you think about, what do you think about um, what's going on with COVID in, right now? I, I, I think it's great. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> COVID, I, I, I never asked you this I think COVID before, is crushing but, it. <laughs> um, excuse me, Fence Post, I didn't ask you this before, but I was just kind of wondering, what are your thoughts on the Third Reich? Loved it. <laughs> well, <laughs> without hesitation, I'll have to get back to you on that one. But <laughs> or you know what? It you know be, what do you think about it? It should just be the same <laughs> response to everything. It should just be like, um, I love. There's something to love about everything. <laughs> hey, something. that happens. You know, because because uh, you know, it, 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 you as humans, we have no choice but to accept that bad shit is going to happen and sometimes good shit is going to happen. And um, is this the disclaimer for the fence.com? This is the disclaimer. The <laughs> yeah. So, but we have to, in order to stay sane and functioning, we have to, um, we have to rip good out of all of our bad, right? Like in, in our worst like corn, like a corn husk. Like, you, dude, I'm, you, I'm talking you, like you, that fucking hair that you're trying to pull out with the tweezers and it's just not fucking coming. And you're, you're just mining. Like, Do I have to wait three more fucking days for this thing to poke out a little bit more so I can fucking yank right. this motherfucker out of my body? That coarse black one. That one that shouldn't be there, yeah, that the, little like right. It's too that, thick that to be in that so area. Dry. It's like, why are you, why are you yeah. here? And you're so thick. I like that hair. 
I think. Welcome to the fence. Fest. <laughs> welcome to the fence, and and <laughs> welcome to the fence on the fence on the fence. Welcome yeah. to, to, to welcome to our show yeah. on the fence. Welcome to the fence, the fence where I am not on the fence. I am clearly fence on squared. one side of the fence on yep. all things. Welcome yeah, to exactly. the fence where I am not on the fence, but we are on the fence, and the show is called on the fence. If you're on the fence, come to the fence, and we'll be on the fence with you. We'll be like, hey, you know what's not, great? The fence. But anyway, it's not about fencing, but we love fencing. In order, we for do us love to fencing. Love it. In order for us to stay sane, we have to, we have to, we we have to. Unless you're not analytical, but if you are cursed with being neurotic or analytical, then you have to rip the good out of every bad situation. Otherwise, you'll lose your mind and you won't want to be alive anymore. Steve, it's, I'm sensing an undercurrent of you losing a certain amount of your sanity. Is that the case currently? Well, Am I picking it's just up on that, that the older I get, you know, they talk about, like, the midlife crisis and things like that. And, like, we're I'm close to that. I'm close to where I should be having what is what is described as a midlife crisis. Some might say you're overdue. Some might say I'm overdue. Some might say you're running a little bit late. <laughs> you know, I've always been late. I think I've always been late to like tent pole important things for fence post important things. You yeah. fence post important things like you know like when like puberty and when you when you get your license and yeah, uh, twenty six was hard for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but everything I, I always do everything so late. Like I didn't smoke weed in high school or college. I did it when I was like a full yeah, grown thirty point. year old man. <laughs> It's like, yeah. you know, not that that's wrong or anything, but it's just I'm a little late to things, I feel I like. never did it when it was illegal. I never, yeah, like, had yeah, that same. experience of being like, oh, this is scary. I only ever yeah. did it in a legal way. I think I had a, nerdy, a I puff of one when it was illegal, but that was about it. But the point I was trying to make is is that I'm... Arrest I, him. Yeah, Elliot. Arrest you're him. making it. You heard of cops. Uh, I'm at a point <laughs> where, you know, I'm thinking about things too much. And then I'm realizing that there's no end to that and then you're cyclical thought it's just okay. cyclical thoughts and thank you are you writing this down <laughs> i wrote down weed and then i wrote down cyclical well, thoughts you know, cyclical okay. thoughts is a new thing though well no it's not anyway so see uh, there's another example of a cyclical <laughs> thought cyclical thoughts is my favorite weezer album so i'm so yeah. like um so anyway <laughs> if i could make a positive point from all of this in over analytical shit um i think um you have to rip out the good moments and take the bad moments and go, the bad thing happened and more bad things will happen no matter what, but you have to rip out the good shit and you have to put it on the bulletin board or on your refrigerator or somewhere where you're going to see it every or day. Or you'll go insane. Or you'll go insane or you'll lose your mind. Yeah. And, and yeah. I know too many people in my life who are amazing artists and I respect them and I want them to live as long as a human can possibly live, but they are too analytical about things that you shouldn't be over analytical about. Otherwise you'll fall into the pit of hell it, while you're alive. And uh, it's sad, it sucks. But so like, um, this is a reminder that if you're that kind of person that gets stuck in the dark place, which we all do, it's Friday the 13th, by the way. I don't know if you guys remember this. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is is that you got to take the good out of the bad and make that the thing that propels you and makes you continue on. Steve, I have three points to uh, respond to you with with, okay. the, with the rambling that we all just uh, experienced together. Yes. Number one. You're correct, and I, I I battle it personally with a little app called Three Good Things. Have I told you guys about that before? No, I think but I, if it's I not downloaded a, it. If it's not a sponsor, you, I, I don't want to hear about it. It's not a sponsor yet. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> I legally can't to... be a part of an ad that isn't a paid ad. Yeah, if so I can't wear things. Three Good Things as underwear, <laughs> I don't have any interest in it. If there isn't a promo code at the end of what you're about to tell us, <laughs> then I can't be. Save Dude. it. Three good things could be an uh, a sponsorship for literally anything that we've been sponsored by. Yeah. Three good things. Uh, that's this great uh, clothing company that sends you three pieces of clothing that make up an outfit. They send you a shirt, they send you some shoes, and they send you some pants. And is they're this three good things, and the hope is that you love them. Not yet. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, what, we just over. what is this? The, spon the unsponsored show? Mm. What are we just? What are you just out of our minds today? 
Well, yeah. A little bit. Hey, guys, Three I want to tell you awesome a little app. something about simple. Squarespace. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, <laughs> what, what are you saying, Joe? <laughs> About your three good things. All right. The three good things app. I highly recommend you download it. It's just this daily thing that pings you, and it's like write three good things that happened today. They can be super simple, but it's basically like journaling on your phone. It comes with some great quotes that are like, that remind you that the world doesn't suck. Um, and it's just a good practice. Many therapists, many uh, psychoanalysts, Joe, all of them. I you know? I will say I, I downloaded the app as you you because you recommended this a, a couple months mm -hmm. ago and it sounded great. It has not changed my life or worked in any way. That said, <laughs> I have also <laughs> I've also not opened it or used it one time. You know what? Uh, <laughs> so that's a good point, though. Yeah. Because as Joe was describing it, I was thinking, oh, that's not for me, and it's okay because not like there's so many types of therapy and so mm -hmm. many types of ways to to find the positives and and remove the things that are blocking your happiness and uh you know it could be talk therapy it could be travel or it could be meditation it could be so many different things and um that's the beauty of it you're there's you're it's not hopeless there are certain things oh. that are certainly hopeless but your individual Happiness is something I believe is attainable with real work, and it is. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta roll the dice sometimes. You know, it's like, okay, I just did it. I didn't get a Yahtzee on this thing. Yeah. I tried a new skill. I tried a new therapy. If it doesn't work out, that's yep. all right. Pick up those dice and roll again, baby. Because but I like the three good things there. thing. I like the good three good things. I did open it. I was just joking and exaggerating, and it does have really cool quotes in there, and I, I want to remember yeah. to do it. I had to do it. It's work, just like great. anything else. Yeah, it's work. Put the like, effort you in. have to do it. Yeah. Um, I have to acknowledge, too, that going like, oh, everyone can attain happiness is, all, is something that is said from a place of privilege in a lot of ways, but... Um, I do think you that, don't think unprivileged people can find happiness. No, it's just I don't think it's fair to say you can find happiness. Um, it's anxiety inducing for anybody. It's this yeah. weird thing where people go do this, this, and then if you don't feel happy, then you get in your head because you're like, I should feel happy mm -hmm. all the time. No one told you you're supposed to be happy all the time. That's not some goal that you have to fight for in life. You can just be fine your entire life. There's nothing wrong with being fine. Why don't we all try to be fine for a god dang second? And this is the fence, guys. Welcome back to the fence. <laughs> Welcome back to the fence. <laughs> where we're fine. fine. Welcome back to the fence. We're fine. We're on the fence with the fence on the fence. And this is on mm -hmm. the fence. Um, you know, I, I'm just saying that there are some people who um, have very unfortunate living situations, way more than mine. And uh, and so it's I'm sitting in a in a L.A. apartment. Yeah. And I'm like, happiness is attainable, you know, and, and I'm just saying that I, it's coming from a place of privilege when I say that. But you give um, a perspective. That's nice. Right. That's all I'm trying to yep. say. And and I just think that everyone it sucks that it's not attainable for everyone in, a, in some ways. But if you have access to these things and you're miserable, you're not alone. Truly, I think I would say happiness is attainable for everyone, but it's not a state you can just stay in. And I feel like there's so much right. pressure put on of this belief that like you're just supposed to be happy all the time. Right. But if you can experience moments of it, but then we have all this pressure, it just makes you feel self-conscious about not being happy. And that only adds to your your it only makes you freak out more. It gives you more anxiety. Right. And that brings mm -hmm. us back to the whole thing of like, you know, there's going to be bad shit and there's gonna be good shit. And you can't just be afraid of and anticipate and live in the bad shit. You have to know that there will also be good shit. And even if it feels like there's nothing but bad shit, you have to pull the good shit out of that because you know you can find something good in a bad situation, even when you feel like it, that's impossible. But no matter what, you're learning something from that situation. And that's a good thing. And maybe in learning, you'd never do that thing again, or you protect yourself from something because you learned from it, because you had to experience it yourself. All I'm saying is there is good in every bad situation. And if you try your goddamn hardest to find that good, you won't go insane. Steve, I want what the number do you think was speaker you just talked to? Who did you talk to? Yeah. I talked to no one. I'm just yeah. no, you're on something. No, no. I'm what happening. Instagram? I'm fucking <laughs> almost 40, Joe. And I'm like struggling through the worst of my life 
right now. <laughs> I had a di- uh, I, I know had, that's oh. I had a virus that could, is killing people and uh, I couldn't see my friends and I've been alone for the longest amount of time in my entire life and I'm just like going through all this shit so like I'm experiencing life and I'm feeling like I'm staying up at night thinking about all the bad shit and thinking about well, how I it's, know that feeling and how it's endless yeah. but I'm also working as hard as I possibly can to pull the good stuff out of it and anticipate good stuff. Good. Three good things. Now, Joe, I will say, just to go back for a moment, you said you had three points. Your first was that you agreed with Steve. Your second was three good things. Did you have a third point? Well, no, the first, uh, the the agreeing with Steve was a fourth accidental point. My second point was... That's too many points. What Steve is talking about... a lot of points. ...is a show that I... I came up with a while ago that I never made or anything, but it'd be, it was called say something nice. And it's exactly what you're talking about, Steve. But like I was surrounded or I was always seeing all these like movie critiquing, uh, brands and websites and YouTube channels that almost always are constantly just ragging on the thing that they proclaim to love. Like we love movies, but they're all like this movie shit because this movie shit because, right, this movie right. because. <laughs> right. Oh, we love movies, but fuck them. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, why don't you guys make a show called Say Something Nice where these people, you take like classic movies that are kind of shit or are getting just ripped apart or have over time and you force these these uh, these critics critics to watch these movies and they're, you have to like come in with a list of like three to five things that are redeeming qualities about the movie. Do you have a name I love that. Yeah. for it? Say say something, say something nice. nice. Okay, because I have a pitch for a, na- a different name, but it's a big risk, and I need you to hang on and go with me on this journey for a second. <laughs> okay, okay. The fence. Okay. The fence. <laughs> yeah. No, we call it um, uh, that sucked, but dot dot dot, and it's got it's a double entendre because it's you could say that sucked, but. <laughs> And it could be like, you know, the remember the South Park game that was But also that sucked butt. That sucked butt. <laughs> yeah. But but you could say that sucked, but and the whole show could be like, hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're talking about um the Sonic Geely. the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Yeah, Geely. Uh that movie sucked. But you know, and the whole yep. rest of the thing is positive. The yep. only time it's negative is right in the beginning when you say, That sucked, but you know, yep. and then you go on to all the good shit. You get a good old theme song. Yeah. You know, you watch that's the sucked, movie. But, that's yeah. sucked, but. That's sucked, but. It might have been some dirty smut, but at the end of the day, that sucked, but. That sucked, but. <laughs> that sucked, but. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome back to That Sucked, But. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's, um, let's have another fucking podcast. Why not? I'm out of sucked, here. but. <laughs> And he's gone, everybody. There goes he's Elliot. gone. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Oh, wait. He got a package. Oh. What is he doing? What's happening? I hope he opens it on the show. What the what fuck? Is that a bomb? I was... Yeah, it's a bomb. <laughs> I just... That sucked, but... Three, two... <laughs> um, I, uh... My, uh, Zoom is, uh... You know, riveting... Riveting... Co- my Zoom is running out of battery, so I'm trying to plug it in. Yeah. Oh, I was like, were you putting it in the sun, thinking that would so charge it? Yeah, it's solar. It's a solar power <laughs> zoom. Um. Anyway, so we got super off track, and I love your show idea, Joe. I think you should make it. Um. But yeah, just try to stay positive. Try to find the good stuff in the bad, and learn from your mistakes and all that shit. And then everything will be okay. You won't go insane. I mean, not everything will be okay, but you won't go insane. Hopefully. Anyway, thoughts. Okay. Uh... So <laughs> it's Friday the thirteenth. Not when you guys listen to this. But to the three boys before you, in your ear holes, it's Friday the 13th. And you know, whatever. 13 supposedly like a f- cursed number or something. And then Well, it's th- my birthday. Not today, specifically. But the but number I, 13. I've had many of my birthdays land on Friday the 13th, and they always... Really? They always felt special. Yeah. The other thing, I have a, a, I have a weird connection to Friday the 13th, the movie franchise. Did oh. you know that? I think you knew that. Um, I did comedy sports and oh, here in yeah. LA a lot. And I did comedy sports with Derek Mears, who is a giant of a human being, like an um, actual giant and has played actual giants and big, big ass people in a, a number of films that you have watched, like 
uh, Will Smith's Wild Wild West. You remember that dude with like the metal head that he punches? It sucked, but <laughs> yeah, it sucked, but it sucked, but um, it sucked, but but anyways, he played um, he played uh, Jason Voorhees in the remake that came out or like 2010 or whatever. Boy. The really super fast like running Jason. Yeah, and he was very menacing, but. Yeah, he's really cool, really sweet, and playing, doing improv with that man, like, he would lift me, like, and throw me around on stage in in the most insane ways, but I felt safe and cradled and cuddled. Yeah. Do you and, miss it? Like he's yeah. done it so many times. Right. Yeah, it was he's awesome. It was like... It was like dirty dancing. I was Jennifer Grey to his Patrick Swayze, but he'd do even more advanced moves. And it was awesome. Anyway, did you that's have my the time of, the 13th. Did you have the time of your life? I had the time of my night many of times. <laughs> the time of my night? <laughs> <laughs> Because anyway. we would perform about eight o'clock. Well, that's awesome. You've got a you've got a six degrees of Friday the Thirteenth. I got your, one degree. Life. Well, yeah. yeah, but you know, whatever. You could play the game, and you're in there. Dude, anyway, he so, went on to play uh, Swamp Thing. Oh. Uh, that show yeah, that, that didn't make it. It didn't make it, but people love it. I think it. I didn't even uh, see it. I think it actually is kind of loved. But really? Oh, mm -hmm. maybe I'll check it out. CW? Then. Was that a CW I, thing? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I I was pretty excited about it, and then I heard it was not so good, and then I and then it got canceled or something. I just don't think it got its fair shake. Yeah. As, as they Man, say. Man, so many shows don't. It's so interesting. Can I? Uh, can I tell you guys about a show that I think is arguably one of the funniest shows I've seen in quite yes, some time absolutely. that I'm not yes. hearing anybody talking about? Yeah, can uh, you Grace somehow keep much... it within the Friday the 13th theme, <laughs> Elliot? I can. Yeah, you know how sometimes there's a reporter that shows up and you hear the reporter on the TV screen being like, there's a killer on the loose. Yeah. I don't know if that happens, uh, but there's a show... <laughs> I mean, I, there's a show. It's not quite what if like that. that but, what if know, that was that all thing, they said? What if that was like, it? What if it was just like, hey, uh, oh, breaking news. Uh, uh, I'm here in uh, downtown Los Angeles. There's a yeah. killer on the loose. Back to you. <laughs> Freddie. Yeah. I just screamed. Dude, you know what? It, sh it should be, uh, you know, the first time a killer on the loose was reported. <laughs> Here's actual audio of the first time. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Dave. I'm here in downtown Santa Monica. There's a killer on the loose. Back to you. <laughs> Back to you. Um, hey. We okay. have no other information. Don, is there any other <laughs> any other information? <laughs> Back to you. Okay, but you're on the scene. Are, are, are there police officers there? Yeah. There is a killer on the loose. Uh, Back to you. Okay, how do you know this? Well, he's on the loose and he's killed. Back to you. Are there any? No, he's like over there. He's running around. Okay, Don, <laughs> Don, listen to me and stop saying there's a killer on the loose. Listen to okay. me. Uh -huh. Is there a police officer near you? Well, I'm looking around and what the information that I have is that I somebody murdered people and they are free. Again, I just need an answer to one question, Don. I'm sure everyone who's listening live uh -huh. on the uh -huh. air right now, you're yes. on live TV, Don. You're on live TV, Don. Yes, I, uh, yes. I'm sure everyone would like to know the answer to this one question. Right. Are there police officers on the scene? The only information that I have is that there is a killer on the loose. Back to you. I don't want to work on the news anymore <laughs> hey babe i'm watching the news right now and i have very limited information to give you <laughs> but there's a killer on the loose <laughs> there's a killer on the loose it's the worst thing you can say to someone with zero follow-up <laughs> just the worst field reporter <laughs> Uh, but the funny Wait, thing is, Don, is, is this a new killer or is this an escaped convict who had killed before? <laughs> There's someone on the comms, like in the switcher room, that's like, hey, Don, I don't think we should say that. <laughs> you know? I don't think you should repeat there's a killer on the loose until we have more information, Don. <laughs> and then say nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> say nothing. Yeah. And don't well, answer any more questions. Don, is there a cop? Do you see a cop? You know, nor do I see a killer because the killer is on the loose. Uh, we should make sketches. Speaking of that, yeah, we should. Speaking of that crazy scenario, though, with reporters, guys, there's a show on HBO right now called Small Town News that is a documentary series that follows KPTV uh, in the town of Pahrump, 
it's about 60 miles outside of Las Vegas, and it is one of the only 95 independently owned news stations in the country, and it is arguably one of the funniest TV shows I have ever witnessed. Is it? It is literally insane. Is it satire? No, it is an actual real documentary. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, and it is, it's the closest thing to a real life office I've ever seen. The characters are unbelievable. I can't believe these people exist, and I want to go there and visit and say hi. Wow. I think we should do a collab. Wow, I love um, that. So that's all I had to say, but you, uh, they would report it like that, basically, I, I would... if there was a killer on the loose. <laughs> There's a killer on the loose. <laughs> Yes, what but was this, what was it called again? <laughs> Small Town News. Small Town News. Give it a try. It's Elliot, uh, pretty good. Are you Elliot or Joe? Are you guys watching White Lotus? No, but I've no, seen many that? um uh, seen many tweets and many headlines uh, of people saying how much they love it. It's so good. It's Mike White's new thing, um, and. Uh, he it's about a resort in Hawaii and about a bunch of uh, the people that stay at the resort. And and it's like uh, Steve Zahn is in it and uh, love oh, wow. Alexandra Zahn. Daddario, who's incredible. And it's just a really great cast and it's incredibly acted. Oh, and um, what's her name? I keep wanting to say Julia Sweeney, but that's not her name. The woman, Don Shadle. The woman who's like, <laughs> she always plays like an insane mom and she's always like, and she looks like she has like a bunch of lip enhancements and she's like, oh, I love Jennifer Coolidge. Jennifer Coolidge is in it and she's <laughs> fucking incredible. So, and it's not a super comedy and there's like a, a little bit of uh, suspense and, and kind of like a mystery kind of going on. But um, it just got renewed for another season and apparently the next season is going to be about a different resort. On the, uh, like, uh, but Ooh, an anthology same concept, kind of but different resort. Yeah. That's kind of cool. If I like am able to have a moment where I have complete clarity in my brain and I'm able, I'm able to connect all the synapses and folds together and I go, who are my favorite actors? Sam Rockwell will always be number one, oh, but I so think good. I forgot. I think I forget that Steve Zahn is probably in my top five. He's really fucking good. Yeah. He, I love where him. does, uh, where does Leo DeCap go for you? Oh Joe? yeah, for real. I mean, he's amazing, and I respect what he does, but he doesn't register as like he's my favorite. Like I just like him, yeah. I like I gravitate towards um, Rockwell and Zahn. I think it's just because they're just a little off center, you know. Yeah. You know what? I also feel like you're probably connecting the kind of like real guy kind of like connection that you want to have like the kind of guy you could bump into at a bar and have a drink Probably. with and it feels like leonardo dicaprio is not the kind of guy you would bump no. into at a bar and have just have a beer with but you could certainly do that yep. with sam rockwell or fucking steve zahn i feel like and you guys would talk about all the man stuff i i, I don't know maybe i feel like that has something to do with it that connection maybe. yeah I, I think you're right yeah nate bargatze has a really funny bit about how he He's like, I followed Leonardo DiCaprio on Twitter. So thought that'd be fun. He tweets nothing funny ever. <laughs> it's just the most depressing stuff. It's about how the planet's dying. <laughs> yeah. See, that's that's yeah, that's so funny when when you're like, man, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. I wonder what he's like in real life. And then you're like, oh, he's like an insane activist <laughs> and like like really active <laughs> humanitarian in his mm. off time. And it's very so much yeah. very so serious. Much so so much so that I'm like, when do you have time for acting? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you, how yeah. do you make movies? Yeah. It's, it's, it's cool. I mean, bless up, man. I'm glad somebody with money is is giving a shit. Dude, are you seeing all the Brendan Fraser love that's out there? Yeah! Because he's having like this awesome <laughs> resurgence and he's going to be in a yeah. fucking Scorsese. He's going to be in a Scorsese. That's Dude, awesome. I was hoping he'd be in a Tarantino before a Scorsese. Ooh, Thoughts on that? Welcome back to the fence. <laughs> well, I love it. <laughs> I like it. Me too. I love it. Okay, guys. <laughs> no, but yeah, have you heard that, Elliot, about Brendan Fraser? No, I didn't hear about the uh, Martin Scorsese thing. That's really cool. Yeah, he's just... Wasn't he blacklisted or something? He he, he was blackballed or something like that from Hollywood? Brendan Fraser? He, yeah, um, for a while. He kind of got like reverse Me Too blackballed, I believe. Do not put my... Whoa. I think it was something like that. Yeah, like, he got like... Like a producer, I think a male producer groped him at a party or something yeah like that. It's something like that something crazy Whoa. and then it kind of like yeah it just you want like kind of steamrolled down um I, I think that's what happened and then you know whatever it's 
things get tough for some some people and i think there became a narrative associated with him not oh, being in um, things yeah. For real, though, you guys should watch the Val Val Kilmer documentary oh, on uh, watch it. Amazon so Prime. It's it's really, really, really good. Yeah, like gut wrenching and kind of beautiful and a wild. Like it's worth watching. I heard it makes you want to just like watch all of Val Kilmer's movies right away when you're done watching it. Yeah, it's Val definitely Kilmer like first, probably in my top ten. Right yeah. After. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Another dude you could probably have a beer with. Um, perhaps guys, maybe I, I think I think he's such a like a he's at such a high artist level of thinking and and being that I may not be able to connect with a Val Kilmer. I told it's, you my Val Kilmer tough story yeah. right now too. He's got yeah. a it's you see him well, and yeah, then now, he's still yeah. him and there's moments where he's so funny still like it and like I was cracking up at there's Oof. parts where I was like this dude's he's Protect him at all costs. Yeah. Dude, Real Genius and his Doc Holiday are some of my favorite actors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, ever. dude, Mad Mardigan. Fucking. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Mad fucking Mardigan. Oh, ooh, ah, chills. Um, When I typed in Brendan Fraser into the news and, and clicked on into Google and typed in news, something really wonderful popped up. An article, there's a bunch of articles right now saying Brendan Fraser gets emotional when learning fans are rooting for him in a viral TikTok. Should we look Very at this cool. right now? I haven't seen this TikTok. To. Let's look at it right now. If you can find the TikTok. Hi everybody, and welcome to the ad portion of the podcast. My name is Elliot Morgan, and I'm here to tell you about some products and or services that I think will make your life easier. And if you're interested, you can check out all the information in the description, either on the YouTube video or on the podcast episode itself. Let's dive right into it. Guys, summer is showing some pretty welcoming signs of life finally returning back to normal eventually. I'm very excited about the possibility of one day being able to smile at my neighbor and maybe even go see a movie, maybe even go to the post office. Wait a minute, that can't be right. Hold on. Okay, some parts of normal life aren't so great. Like, for example, going to the post office. But with stamps.com, you can skip trips to the post office and save on postage. Mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. You can send letters, you can ship packages, and guess what? You pay less, a lot less, with discounted rates for both USPS and UPS. Stamps.com saves businesses thousands of hours and tons of money every year. It certainly saves us money every year when we do our uh, our Patreon gift. Uh, I use stamps.com and I use the discount every time. It's really great and they're very helpful and it's very convenient. Stamps.com brings the same U.S. postal and UPS shipping services right to your computer. It's like magic. They make it easy for small businesses to mail and ship without needing to take a trip to the post office. Thank you, goodness. Print official U.S. postage and shipping labels 24-7 without having to leave your desk or buy any fancy equipment. You know what I'm saying? All you need is like a computer and a printer. You have those things, right? You should. If you don't... <laughs> Anyway, once, you ma wait, <laughs> once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's that simple. You can do either one. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving nearly one million small business owners like you and me time and money. <sighs> they offer deals you can't get anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. And with their switch and save feature, you can quickly compare carriers to find the best rates every time. So you're saving money on top of saving money. How cool is that? So stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's literally no risk. And with our promo code VALLEYCAST, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale, no long term commitments or contracts. That's right, just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in VALLEYCAST. That's stamps.com, promo code VALLEYCAST. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Yeah, going places really isn't my favorite thing to do. I don't even like to go places to shop for clothes. Wait a minute, we have another product slash service to tell you guys about. Hold on. Holy moly, it's Stitch Fix. You guys have heard about them. I use them all the time. They're absolutely fantastic. All hits, no misses with those guys. They send clothes, you wear them, and they're absolutely wonderful and comfortable, and they fit most of the time. And if they don't, you can send it back really easily. Shopping for new clothes can be needlessly stressful. So why not let Stitch Fix make it easy by doing all the work for you so you can spend time doing the things you actually love doing. Like, <laughs> looking good, you know what I'm saying? All right, anyway, Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists who do not take that name lightly. They are really good at what they do for your unique size, your style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home. 
in the comfort of your bedroom, okay? And then you get to buy or keep your favorites and then send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope that makes everything super easy. There's no subscription required. You can try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. How about that? You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, but hey, guess what? That $20 styling fee, uh-oh, gets credited toward pieces you keep, and there's no hidden fees ever. How about that? Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and children. And they ship all over the United States and even to the UK. How cool is that to you, uh, UK people? So I think it's a no-brainer if you ask me. Anyway, if you'd like to get started, get started today at stitchfix.com slash valleycast, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your box. That's right. That's stitchfix.com slash valleycast for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash valleycast. They are really wonderful. Uh, back to the show. Go away, whatever this is. <laughs> Riveting. <laughs> Allow ads. Continue to cite. Okay, this is annoying. Okay, hang on, yeah. I'll find it. You guys, the internet's a nightmare these it's days. It's really amazing. You can't just click and get it. No, it's nuts. It's so crazy. <laughs> you have an ad blocker, they demand you take it off. It's okay. so mean. Okay, ready? you guys ready for this? Let me Let me share my screen. Oh, okay. If you're uh, listening, you can go to youtube.com slash the valley folk to watch this in real time. And that's yeah. porno. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn it, I should have done it. That would have been, it been so too good. much work for Ryan. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, oh, let me let me make sure. Look how cool looking he I love Brendan Fraser. I love him. Okay, you guys ready for this? Yes, dude. Okay. Do yeah. it. I love it. I'm, I'm going to work with Scorsese and Leo and Bob De Niro. Yes, oh. I saw. Congratulations. That's so Thank exciting. Thank you. I think I might be sick. A little anxious. Oh, oh no, no. I mean, it's going to be fun. Like... <laughs> You've got this. You've got this. Got it. Just, just know that the internet is so behind you. We're so supportive. There are so many people out there oh. who love you, and we're rooting for you, and we can't wait to see what you do next. <laughs> oh, what a sweetheart. Shucks, ma'am. <laughs> this cowboy hat Oklahoma that's yeah better. there it is that's the whole thing I about. love it I love um, it I'm gonna work with Scor yeah oh what a sweetheart he's got such a uh, he's always had such an emotive face yeah and even there I'm yeah. like oh he could go to clown school like he's just so good <laughs> you know yeah. he was a big goofball and he had his moment and uh, he was in everything for a little while when we were younger and I yeah. think he got he kind of like to me I just like he he was like Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence and all those people that they put in your face for years and years and years with like movie after movie after movie. And then you're kind of like sick of seeing them. And for me, I was like kind of I felt that way about Brendan Fraser for a long time. I bet you want him back, though. Oh, Do yeah. You know I'm felt? so excited. Did Do you, you know love it? I, felt? I loved it. <laughs> Yeah, there's never like, anything that I saw never. with Brendan Fraser where I was like, I don't too much like Brendan, that. not me. I just, I just remember thinking like, man, this motherfucker doesn't say no, and and I and it was at a time where I, it where I didn't understand that saying no was stupid when you when you're in the movie industry. Uh -huh. Um, but I remember just thinking like, man, this guy's in fucking everything. But you know, you guys got tired of seeing Jennifer Lawrence and everything, didn't you? No, a little bit. No. No. You know what I like? No, I always kind of like seeing it. Was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elliot, the fence, <laughs> the fence, the fence Dude, would, I think have, if, would have so many subscribers because if just you're be... <laughs> on the fence, if you're on the fence about Brendan Fraser as an actor and just somebody that is pleasant to watch, I think just go watch the Mummy franchise. I think he's amazing in it. Yeah, like next you know, level. I've never seen it. I should see it. I bet I'll like it. Those You'll are it um, they're real. They're they're like pr some of the best adventure stuff yeah. in a really right. long time. And, uh, you know, I was just talking about this. Did you guys watch Jungle Cruise? I watched parts of it. My family watched it and I was in and out. <sighs> you know. Uh, no. No. I just really no, I would say I've had enough of The Rock. <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> For a second. <laughs> See, they're doing it with The Rock, too. But um, but I love The Rock. I'm kind of just barely yeah, getting it. into The Rock. I, I wasn't really into the Fast and Furious movies, and I'm not a wrestling guy. So, um, But now I love him, pretty much. But anyway, uh, so the thing with Jungle Cruise is, is like, I was like, man, I, I, I just, you know, they keep trying to make adventure movies work. Oh. And I was really excited about a new attempt at an adventure movie because, man, I just thank you to Spielberg and Richard Donner and all the good boys for making 
uh, Amazing Adventures, uh, Bob Zemeckis, whatever, all those good mm. boys. And, uh, oh, fucking Ron Howard and shit. Anyway, so I love adventure movies, and the Mummy movies go perfectly into the whole good adventure movie world. But, man, I really wanted Jungle Cruise to be a good adventure movie, and it was just kind of really cool at first, and then it became another Pirates of the Caribbean movie to me yeah they kind yeah. of did that a little bit here's a question for you boys what what do you how would you rank the current wrestler actors we've got dave batista we've got john cena and we've got the rock because man this is gonna sound like a callback to what i've been saying but i do really like all of them yeah uh, they're fun <laughs> i loved uh john cena in the suicide squad batista's fun in the whatever movies and yep. it's fun. <laughs> In those I don't. Movies. I got no. Uh, you don't need to act. Who cares? Yeah, that's just my be, answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just well, be uh, charming. That's John what makes Cena. it fun. Yeah. John Cena yeah. is, and I love. I love watching him, but he's such a bad actor. Oh yeah. Yeah. He can barely do lines. He's yeah. it's incredible, but it's so endearing that you love him. Well, every yep. time I see him in a movie, I'm like, oh man, here comes John Cena. <laughs> and then, and uh oh, here comes here John comes Cena. Here comes John Cena, and then and then it's like he John Cenaing the place, and and uh, and yeah, you're right. He's a terrible actor, but he's so fun to watch for some yeah. reason. Yeah, <laughs> he's a star. And honestly, The Rock early in his career, because we forget that The Rock has been acting for fucking ever yeah. now. Since like, Mummy franchise. Yeah, I think, was that his first when he the was Scorpion Digibot? King? Scorpion King? Yeah. Scorpion King, I believe, was his first, at I least, like, could be, his yeah. movie. Yeah. Like, and back, like, during the Walking Tall days, which I... The Rock said that like. when he went to see uh, the first premiere he ever saw of his own movie was the Scorpion King. Before the premiere, they played the trailer for Pirates of the Caribbean, and The Rock, in his head, was like, one day I hope to be in a movie based on a Disney ride. Whoa. And so when the Jungle Cruise came around, he snatched it up, and that cool. might be why it was so That's sick. That's cool. Yeah. But the rock I just been lo- like... watching a lot of press for Jungle Cruise. For some <laughs> you should just watch it. <laughs> I like, love it. You should watch it because like a... it's a it's a fun adventure. It's a fun attempt at a modern adventure. <laughs> you guys will have a good time. Like I think you and Grace will enjoy it. It's just cool. like stupid turn your brain off shit. I just was like sick of seeing Pirates of the Caribbean shit still, and that's just what it was to me. Anyway, yeah. sorry. I loved uh... it. <laughs> uh, um, I will say just to go back to Joe what you were saying earlier uh, where you were like oh he had like uh, Brendan Fraser had a little uh, Me Too movement type of deal uh, we got distracted with how great it is that people are supporting him which is wonderful and beautiful but I did look it up and it is in fact uh, 100% true and the way you described it is pretty much how it happened Wow! Yeah, like, like it happened to him and I want to make that clear wow. he wasn't like he wasn't being accused of doing bad stuff he accused somebody else right, like, right. so he just had a and and he got like a lot of bad press for that like people came after him well he it, literally he went against the uh HFPA, which is the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Uh, and I guess if you do, if you make an accusation against people who oh, are literally they, they, the press. Yeah, they push you out of stuff. Yeah. They could, yeah, they can. Uh, well, because they, they can, so and it's not illegal, because they could just, that's, they just they, control publications and shit. And if they don't want to put you in their magazines or feature you in upcoming yep. things, then you will not be seen. The, oh, you disappear. Yeah. Wow. They disappear you. Politics, man. That's um, scary shit. It's everywhere. Well, we gl- we glad, we're glad he's back. Dude, um, transitioning. I was telling Elliot this before we got on the podcast, and you guys were saying something on the podcast or before that you wanted to talk about. But now I can't remember because I wasn't there. But you said, we'll talk oh, about oh, oh, we were going to talk about fruit flies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, Why there's so many fruit flies. Wait, can I say one thing really quick before we do <laughs> go right into fruit flies? Uh, um, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So because we because uh, well, because I have a question for you, Joe, because Elliot oh, okay. and I really connected and now we can open up about this because yeah, thank you, for, a second, for a second, I was feeling like a real gross boy. And I'm sure Elliot was feeling like a gross boy because there's fucking yeah. fruit flies everywhere do you have the fruit fly situation joe i don't but i've had a fruit fly situation in the Mm. past and it's usually because you leave something laying around be it in your sink or be it in your garbage i mean i'm looking around and i there's a lot of boxes and dead bodies but there's no food out (laughs) oh i we i we i'm sure it's my fault 
<laughs> your yeah, hour. Yeah. I'm sure it's a us created problem in this household. Yeah, but, there might um, be something under the fridge, or maybe or something like they're that. So but you know what, Joe? I think they just haven't migrated into your apartment yet. They're coming. They're it's coming. not us. It's they're them. coming for you. It's the they're sun. One it's of those the season. Things, they're one of those things that are so damn harmless, but when you have them, you feel disgusting. Yeah, because it's yeah. Like, and they're they're just in your face. <laughs> you know what, what did I do? I, I blame they're cartoons. So annoying. I blame cartoons because they made flies come around when anything was disgusting. You know, when someone was like, you know, smelly or if there was a poop or something, there was always a fly sound. And so you associate flies with grossness. And I think that's the problem. I blame everything but myself. Damn you, Hanna-Barbera. You think it's the press against flies? Yeah, it's big, big, big flies. Big flies, (laughs) big press fly, big big fly press. It's not the fact that they poop and then eat their own poop. Speaking of big flies. throw up and then eat their own vomit. Did you guys ever see that movie Rubber? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the no. guy that made Rubber, which is a really tongue-in-cheek, strange art movie Elliot, about a killer tire. It's a tire. movie about a tire. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a tire that has telekinesis and goes around, like, blowing oh, people's yeah. heads up. Blowing people's heads just it. by looking I thought at it was some sort of about a zany scientist who makes some sort of green, jello-like no, being. No, that's that Flubber. My bad. <laughs> and is there any police on the scene? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but um, so this there's a movie by the guy that did Rubber. It's out now, and it's called Mandibles, I think. And it's about these two guys that find a giant fly and try to like raise it as a pet. It's Weird. like literally a big giant fly, like a dog sized fly. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's like a buddy comedy kind of. All right, I'm gonna give it a shot. With a big giant fly. <laughs> See, Are you going to give that a shot? This is the kind of yeah. shit that I absolutely eat the fuck out of, Elliot. Is it These called are my, It's called Mandibles. So. I think it's great. I, I just, like, when I hear a movie like that exists, I'm like, when can I see it? And when can I get all my friends to watch it yeah. with me and laugh at it? I, I have a very low threshold for, um, not me personally, but I've learned that in this house there's a low threshold for violence. And so that really narrows down yeah. the amount of movies I watch. So it's a lot of Lego Master and making it, That's a good which show. is interesting. Will, uh, what's not Will Forte? Uh, Will Arnett hosts Lego Master, which is the exact same structure of the show of making it, which Amy Poehler uh, hosts. Whoa! And I think it's very funny. Mm. Oh, interesting. You can watch like they your both favorite needed comedians to have hosting evening. Uh, competition shows yeah. <laughs> yeah so that has nothing to do with anything but let's, i'll check out mandibles tonight yeah, we'll see I how that goes yeah well i don't know if it's available to stream or yet but um and also i don't know if it's violent or not so just check no, out the I'm trailer sure at least check out the trailer it sounds you guys gross. want to look Is at the gross? trailer right now i can pull it up Leo. what the hell was that oh it was brendan <laughs> fraser <laughs> Scorsese up, and brendan Leo. fraser all right, we're done with Brandon Fraser. We're done. We're going to watch the Mandibles trailer really quick. Mandibles trailer. We could cut this out Ooh. for the audio, and maybe it'll just be for the video or something. I don't know. Or you guys can listen to this. <laughs> Whoa. But... You heard that? Oh, it's... Oh, it's a mouse. But no. Yes, it's a Oh, wow. <laughs> so we see a giant fly and they're like we can train it like a monkey so they're trying to train it yeah i think uh i think i'm on board <laughs> yeah oh deer skin now they're looking at babes this is like an 80s yep. i bet you that fly might get in the way of a, of a, making a connection with maybe they, they're trying to get laid but that fly keeps getting in the way it's kind of cute it's cute it looks like a like a star wars creature yeah it's just a big it reminds puppet. me of goose a little bit yeah yeah it's got big big puppy big energy. eyes yeah. It said, did that just say the fly meets the Farrelly brothers? <laughs> oh, there's a little cute dog, too. Anyway, there you go. That's Mandibles. Yeah. Wow. Looks kind of fun. That seems really sweet. Yeah. But yeah, get ready to read. It's, it's, 
it's got that independent film feel that we I feel like we just don't get that often anymore. Mm -hmm. Dude, you know? <laughs> Deerskin is another movie the guy that that guy directed who did the rubber too. I got to tell you guys about Deerskin really quick. Just the premise is this guy buys a Deerskin jacket and he goes, "This is the greatest jacket that exists." And he loves it so much that he goes on a journey to destroy all of the jackets in the world so that he can have the only <laughs> jacket <laughs> wow that's a movie dude i love it it's that's it, great we need more like that, we need that. <laughs> he wants the only jacket you guys making the movies out of the dumbest simplest plots <laughs> exactly. is a hundred percent the way to go exactly. in the future yeah it's original it's silly it's lighthearted. i thought when you said rubber that you were referencing that movie we watched uh in like arizona or something oh. of uh greasy, greasy, greasy strangler, greasy strangler. <laughs> yeah that's so another I, one of those that's a different genre <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little different, a little grosser, I think. That movie... Are there any cops in the area? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not right, just a well. killer, still on nah. the loose. Dude, the ending of Greasely Strangler is one of those... Not a lot sticks in my head these days with this old brain, <laughs> but the ending of Greasy Strangler lives rent-free. It won't go away. So it I won't saw, go away. I saw Greasy Strangler at Fantastic Fest, and I left before the end because I was just, like, so done with it. I was like, <laughs> I'm done with this disgusting fucking movie. I was like, cool, it's like a Tim and Eric movie, and it's gross as fuck. I'm going to love this. And then an hour and a half in, I'm like, I can't, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> wow. So I left. But then when we watched it in Arizona together, I watched the whole thing for the first time. And that ending is truly weird. <laughs> it's an ending. It's, I, I mean, I could not believe it went there. Like, I don't know. I, you can't predict that ending. Some movies have the ability to give you so much. Others have the ability to take things away from you that you can never get back. And yeah. that is one of those. That is a yeah, it's a take. It's a taker. That, oh, that's um, a taker. Speaking of uh, ideas that come from, or movies that come from stupid ideas, um, one of Kevin Smith's best modern movies, I think, is, is Tusk. Have you, have you guys seen Tusk? I, I saw Tusk, yeah. Okay, so Tusk came from their podcast. They were just talking about, like, what if we made, what if there was a movie about a guy that was obsessed with walruses and he just wanted to turn someone into a, a walrus and they would laugh <laughs> about it and then they made it into a movie. And so it's J uh, Justin Long yeah. um, and uh, a bunch of other people. It's a Kevin Smith movie and it's a horror movie. Is it and Rudger Hauer? It's Rudger Hauer. Or, no, 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 it's a guy it, that's like him. It's that guy who's in all the Tarantino movies and he's yeah. old and grizzled. Anyway, yeah. but uh, El Elliot, it's a horror movie, so it's kind of gross and fucked up. But Justin Long is so good in it. And it's literally about a guy that's trying to turn Justin Long into a walrus. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. I love it. Joe, you didn't like it? I was fine. It was fine. I, 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 I liked how unique it was. You're kind of on the fence about it, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I loved it. I was wrong. Yeah. I loved it. I, I just like fence. when things are a little different and they try something a little different. And that's what that was, I think. And that's why I liked it. Um, I just want to see him remake Marvels and movies and see all the Iron Man. Yeah. Little, 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 little. I want to see the world in trouble and someone saving it forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh conversation turn i want i want to see what you guys what what this brings back in your memory boxes i tweeted about this but yesterday i walked to the school with jackson and his and hayden's school is starting in next week and we'll see how that goes but that's not the point of the conversation but we got to do the moment where you go and you find out who your school teacher is and oh yeah what, a, we found out that it was the cool teacher, so we're super excited yeah, about that. Yeah. And then we found out that our next door neighbor, who's his little buddy, is in his class with him. And what? He was so happy That's and great. so excited about going to school now. And I'm like vicariously living through him where I'm like, yeah, we got the good teacher. We got the good the good student in the class who I'm going to make sit very far away from you because I think you're going to distract each other. Yeah, I'm that's the best teacher. move. That's the best move. But like, I'm so, it was this great talking about what you were talking about earlier, oh. Steve. Cause I'm going, we're all going through shit right now, but this was like a very nice, bright spot in the day, in the week. And now he's excited about school. I'm excited for him. Like, do you guys remember that? Like how you would, how would you guys do it? Cause for us, we would, 
be waiting all summer to find out what class we were in and then it would just be plastered like on the side of the school um yeah all of our names and our classes and you'd go down the list and you'd be like oh but yeah it was the best i I always got really nervous really yeah it freaked me out i would always worry about especially in high school i'd always be like am i gonna go to the wrong am i gonna go to the wrong room am i gonna go to the wrong teacher this is freaky i I, I don't know if this was a private school thing but i went to like a catholic school (laughs) catholic private school and it was like our grades whenever we moved up all of our friends moved up too yep same Right? Yeah, in elementary school, is all the same group. You just one class, yeah, one teacher. So you'd whoa, have class. whoa, yeah. So we would get a new teacher, but we'd have all of our friends still. So and it would just keep going until like you know, yeah. And then whoa, in- so both of your schooling, like kindergarten through like sixth grade, you were just with the same group of people every year. Yeah, as long as I was at the same school. Like so, I my whoa. my kindergarten was somewhere else, and my preschool was somewhere else. But as soon as I got to first grade, basically I was with those kids for like the rest of my grade. Wow, that's wild to yeah. me. That's so what a foreign experience yeah. compared to what I did. Yeah, yeah. I switched fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade, but then came back like halfway through sixth grade to the original school that I went two for kindergarten through third uh wild crazy times oh. and are, and are there any police officers nearby that we can talk to? <laughs> just a killer it's just a killer on the loose joe i love that your son <sighs> like hit the school the f- back to school yep. jackpot it sounds like yeah like he's super super pumped but I, I, who knows who it's we're also like just in this oh not oblivious but like we have blinders on i think emotionally like it's gonna be tough i think it's going to be insane across the united states i can't even imagine what the hell's going to happen i was just thinking about how like interpersonal like this is kind of tangential but also connected to kind of kids and the future and how things are going to be now that the world is more is even more different (laughs) and it keeps changing uh but uh you know like interpersonal internet relationships and like tiktok and things where like people are like becoming best friends with these people they'll never see in their lives and and it's just perpetuating that i wonder what kind of yeah culture comes from that like i wonder what that generation will be like when they're our age and then will they blame us like we blame the boomers for everything for the interpersonal relationship for us paving the way for interpersonal relationships and things like that i mean it's kind of up to and our generation i think because again we're the ones that kind of saw what it was before and saw what it was after and yeah kind of yeah. experienced the transition like i try to talk to hayden a lot about just having an active mind and realizing like how long have you been staring at your phone what kind of relationship do you have with it what kind of relationship are you having with the people that you think you have a parasocial relationship with and trying to just make sure that you are you are teaching the difference and teaching the healthy habits as much as you can. And that's great. She she seems to get it a little bit. Like she's annoyed with her friends that stare at their phone, their phones when they hang out, because that's what happens. A lot of these kids go hang out at each other's houses or out and they're all just staring at their phones, like not really interacting. And And she so far finds that, as an obtrusive um, action within creating a relationship, which I'm really glad she does. Well, that's yeah, good. that's um, awesome, dude. That's good. The, and there's always I struggle that. with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so do I. Like I'll be on the. It's just like, and then I'll look over at Grace, and we'll both just be on our phones, like, and we're like, "What are we? We wake yeah. up and we're looking at it. Like, what do we do? There's nothing there. It's not. There's nothing good. You know there. what's good? Though? Just sad. We kind of relied on as as we grew up. We kind of relied on when our comedian. Uh, our, our comedian idols we looked up to when they would like make fun of something for being overtly uh, interpersonal or wrong we'd be like whoa okay yeah if this fucking really funny really smart person is like it's so stupid to just stare at your phone the whole fucking time while you have all these like people around to have these wonderful experiences with i felt like that really helped us a lot and i think with you joe teaching your kids about how staring at your phones is not really the best way to make connections with real people um i think there's also movies that do it and tv shows that do it and shine a light on how bad it can be and how it's like excessive and I think mm-hmm. as long as that keeps going, there there will always be people that will be like, yeah, I value an organic, natural friendship and hangout more than a digital one. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, I I understand that I am creating a hypocritical bubble at all times because I am constantly looking at my phone. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the problem with also what we do. 
and it's the nightmares part of it is that when work and your the thing that you create to give your soul light is constantly connected to your phone and the internet and you're constantly wanting to seek out validation from it uh it's a little bit of a mental health nightmare so uh i love it i'm not on the fence at all i love it elliot do you ever think about <laughs> thank you Jeff. elliot do you ever think about how the things that we're doing now and the new technologies and social media uh apps will affect the next generation and stuff do you think about that yeah, I'm genuinely worried. Like genuinely, what do you genuinely think? worried about the. I think we're uh, headed toward a very bad place of isolation, and it's not going to be. We're not even going to. We can't even conceptualize. I think how potentially bad it could be if we go down this path. Uh, Dude, Bowie we're becoming more and more alienated, and it's scary. Remember Bowie? Bowie did an interview where he talked about the internet. And like really early. Yeah. Like oh, in, yeah. in 1999. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, it's going to be a big problem. It was very, it was very insightful. Yep. Yeah. And he was very right. And the guy was like, uh, why is it a problem? The spread of information is so important. And he's like, no, nah. Nah. <laughs> it's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. And then he peaced out. But yeah. you're right, <laughs> yeah. Elliot. It's like <laughs> he didn't want it. He didn't want it. David Bowie didn't want to see TikTok. <laughs> yeah oh you don't want to live him too. but yeah like do you, i just i yeah i feel like we were also part of the of the movement towards this like weird doom of social media yeah. well uh, and like just this they've proven now that misinformation spreads faster than factual information and i think the older generations were completely unaware of how to handle that our generation yep. being caught in the middle kind of gets it the younger generation i don't know if they get it but i don't know if they really care yet and it's just like we have people being fed wrong information on a mass scale being manipulated uh for the profit of people they don't even know about that are basically programming them and it's like this is just a, uh, it's just a scary situation. It's very precarious. So yeah. on that note. I love it. <laughs> uh, speaking of really fun topics, could you guys mind if I plug some shows? Please go Do for it. it. <laughs> if you'd like to get off your cell phone for a second, you can come to Liberty Township on August 18th. That's Wednesday. That's the day this goes public. So if you're around, come on over. I did not uh, advertise these shows very much because I got sick and I was afraid I had COVID, but it turns out I don't. I'll also Yay. be in Columbus, Ohio. Woo! on august 19th that's a thursday uh and so august 18th august 19th ohio you can get tickets to lamorgan.com slash tour and i hope some people come because uh it's going to be very fun and it's going to be a lot of talk about how we're all not really doomed it's going to be just great elliot um, i was surprised you didn't want to do a two-minute bit about liberty township again <laughs> god dude i still am confused by it. i was like looking on a map like okay <laughs> Liberty Township did I, I don't know if I said this last time but it sounds like an area you go to in Fallout you like, you talked about it. People had you said things. Yeah, you definitely said things. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a dangerous place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just yeah yeah. You know um, whatever. I'm it's probably fine. It's my fucking opinion, and I'm stupid. Okay. I think it just sounds like a patriotic. <laughs> uh, it sounds like a patriotic. Yes, name it does sound patriotic. Town. And patriotism feels weird right now. Right. It feels like it's a. It, it signifies something. You can be patriotic. Yeah, yeah. It does yeah. kind of suck that the word got taken. I know. Yeah. I remember a time where I felt patriotic and then I felt ashamed of our country and I haven't stopped feeling that for a while. Yeah, that's I'm, pretty cool I, I things might, about I it. might come back to the patriotism again someday. But. I think it's, we, we, we have we a got, good amount of fruit take, flies. Yeah, take the patriotism back, you know? Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm certainly, I mean, I'm an American and have, have benefited from the spoils of the American way, so uh, I should have a, a hint of patriotism, and I certainly used to. I'm just feeling kind of disenchanted currently. It's tough. It's tough times. The, uh, but I love it. Wild times. <laughs> but I certainly Elliot. love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, Elliot touched on the, the COVID thing. That's that's the other nightmare that we're dealing with is that like every time we've come into the office to shoot something, there's been a, a real or COVID, real or not real COVID scare. And that's why we're remote uh, this time, because last time we we're all in the office. Uh, yeah. Elliot got I was sick. Having, I was having a call or email my agent and be like, I don't know if I can make these, which is like a horrible thing to do to the clubs and also people who bought tickets and i was just like i can't it's a non it's a no-brainer it's like mm -hmm. i just can't do it so hence taking so many tests but uh yeah. it's uh 
it's yeah, just yeah. it's crazy how fast things are changing. So yeah. let's go. Oh, I'm gonna go blow my nose. All right, hey, I got tested too. I, I think I texted you. Yeah, that, but it's like yeah, I'll just go get another PCR, and it was negative. Thank Joe God, always but... bragging about testing. He um, loves his testing. Loves to go get his tests and then brag Love about it. it. Love um, it. So, guys, thank you for listening to the show. We hope you enjoyed our conversations about absolutely nothing based on almost zero uh, educational <laughs> background. And, uh, <laughs> Just assumptions, wild assumptions, wild assumptions and, and sweeping <laughs> claims. Uh, but, you know, it's our show. So get your own <laughs> damn show if you want to talk about whatever the fuck you want. Um, but thank you for listening if you did, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Joe, anything else you want to say? No, that's it, man. I think uh, check out the videos we posted this week and last week. A lot of good movie movie stuff and some game playing. And, uh, yeah, I think by the time this goes out, we will have closed pre-orders. So if you didn't get a game, hey, bad, you sorry. Blew <laughs> you blew Bye, it. everybody. You blew it. Thank you for listening. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye.